ஓம் சுக்லாம்பரதரம் விஷ்ணும் சசிவர்ணம் சதுர்புஜம் பிரசன்னவதனந்தியாயேத் சர்வவிக்னோபாந்தையே சரஸ்வதி நமஸ்துபம் வரதே காமரூபிணி வித்யாரம்பம் கரிஷாமி சித்திர்பவது மே சதா ஓம் சதாசிவசமாரம்பாம் சங்கராச்சாரியமத்தியமாம் அஸ்மதாச்சாரியபரியந்தாம் வந்தே குரு பரம்பராம் சுதா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ப்ரேயர் இஸ் டு லார்ட் கணபதி தட் சர்டன் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் ஆஃப் லார்ட் கணபதி and we pray that uh, the many uh, obstacles in our path may they be resolved in different ways we also invoke uh, the grace of saraswati so saraswati who stands for all kinds of knowledge and we seek her grace uh, and then of course i followed it up with the third prayer which is where we invoke the entire uh, guru parampara so we invoke the parampara because uh, when one teaches one is teaching what one has learnt and uh, you you are just a nimitta an instrument for the knowledge to flow and and that's why we invoke the grace so now bhava discover the dance of emotion in vedanta that's the title of our series and for some of you who are little new to vedanta i will just talk a little bit about it first of all let's understand the word uh, bhava okay bhava comes from a particular root which means to be being okay so bhava colloquially is understood as emotion it's a sanskrit word standing for emotion but it is not only emotion it stands for also the accompanying thought cognition so now in the english language we we make a distinction we make a separation and in many ways language shapes our thinking okay this is a very interesting thing our thinking contributes to language but the language that you use also shapes the way you think so if we are used to making a distinction between thought and emotion so thought is something which is let's say um referring to certain facts so the class is today in the evening at such and such a time so i think i am going to attend thought the accompanying emotion some of us were really looking forward to it some of us were not sure what what is this going to what's going to happen whatever be the accompanying emotion is related to the thought so now the word bhava you know sanskrit word includes emotion and thought because the cultural thinking is no emotion can stand in isolation there is always some accompanying thoughts related to it so we will explore that a little bit more now when it comes to bhava we see that most of us we are a uh, very emotional people okay 
either we are the withdrawn lot because we felt not very understood by people so we withdrew into our shell or we express a lot okay we express our emotions but emotional everyone is so when somebody tells me you know swami ji i'm very emotional i'm like you know what tell me tell me that again everybody is okay the intensity of emotion that you experience may be different how you express it may be different but emotional we are basically emotional cognitive beings both okay both and the beauty of the culture is this bhava that bhava was encouraged that we have no problem with emotion no problem whatsoever so how is it that i can use emotion to basically enhance my life that's what we want to be looking at how can i live my life such that emotion is not a problem for me my whole emotional life in fact we find that emotions such as love patriotism will make you want to give up your life okay they are <laughs> it's not uh, the analysis of the stock market that will make you want to give up your life okay so when you meet people when you meet somebody who, whom you are very close to you are not sitting and discussing the rate of inflation although you may discuss that as well that's not what's going to make you feel close you feel close to another person only when you are sharing emotions so now along with vedanta or the bhagavad gita there is a word called shastra okay and shastra is basically a body of knowledge and there are different kinds of shastra for different purposes so the word bhava particularly comes in natya shastra okay and i will explain what that is natya shastra natya is really uh something to do with theater and this whole body of knowledge called the natya shastra written by bharat muni okay that's his name talks about aesthetic pleasure talks about the pleasure the rasa that is derived from the experience of all emotions so natya shastra is the basis of all classical dance music art theater in india and it is also very similar to greek civilization and what is spoken of in the context of natyam or theater now what is very interesting about natya shastra is uh, chapter 6 and 7 and those chapters have to talk about the theory of emotions so rasa and bhava and when we look at rasa and bhava natya shastra of course delves deeper into how the actor needs to be what are the kind of props the actor needs to use because this is all in the context of theater then what are the kind of musical instruments the person needs to use what is the puja that is to be done before uh the play actually begins 
how can one go deeper into the aesthetic pleasure of the play etc etc well, there's lots of there are more than 6000 verses okay so now we are more concerned with what we might be able to learn from natya shastra regarding emotion and one very interesting thing about india and its culture is that there is the marga there is the path of pravritti pravritti meaning you go towards and there is a path of nivritti a path a road map towards nivritti where you uh move away from or withdraw from certain pursuits natya shastra encouraged everyone to go deep into pleasure okay very interesting so if some of us have been exposed to vedanta we will say no 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 don't do this don't do that or better to avoid this so viveka vairagya etc but natya shastra because it's for the common person also referred to as natya veda so what natya shastra is saying is that the aesthetic pleasure that is there in everyone's heart everyone universally and the capacity to experience pleasure is called rasa so i am going to be using two words rasa and bhava so the capacity to experience some pleasure comes about when certain things happen in the environment and interestingly in in the upanishad in taitriya upanishad there is a verse raso vai sah rasakushevay labdhva nandi bhavati so imagine the upanishad which is the highest knowledge available to mankind to humanity talking about the nature of who you are that upanishad is saying that the sukha the happiness you experience the rasa indeed is brahman is the ultimate reality and gaining that rasa that that aesthetic pleasure that aesthetic pleasure that comes and is sustained by brahman gaining that labdhva anandi bhavati you are you discover your nature as happiness as fullness so the upanishad is referring to brahman the ultimate reality as rasa and that same rasa is spoken of in natya shastra so the upanishads were only available to the few select people who went to the teacher for knowledge and lived in the gurukulam and all of that so does it mean that this rasa this this experience of happiness that comes from experience of all emotions are you telling me it's not available to others not possible so rasa is available to everyone because all emotions are there in the human heart there is no emotion to avoid there is no emotion to get scared of and there is no emotion to suppress so i would assume that a lot of you like to watch movies if you don't then there's something wrong with you okay <laughs> or you enjoy watching a play or some theater because in that experience what the actors do whatever is the plot of the story 
however they interact with each other even looking at a horror movie some people are delighted there are some of us who will say my god what's wrong with you why would you want to go into a movie and get scared why are you paying to get scared but there are some people who who get rasa you know that that essence of the experience in getting scared and then again there are some of us you you want to go for a movie or a play although you have heard that the ending is not a very happy ending it's kind of sorrowful but still you will go still you will cry and still you'll be happy saying oh what a beautiful movie and you are very moved and you are very touched by what you saw in the movie really speaking the movie is not just some images the movie has touched you at at a very deep level it has touched you emotionally and of course in terms of its intellectual content and all of that so the what the upanishad is talking about raso vai saha that rasa that that rasa indeed is brahman that brahman from which everything has come that gaining which one is discovers that one is fullness all the time that rasa natya shastra says that it is available to everyone when they go to watch a play or a movie or you watch a music performance or dance and it is something that is available to the villager it is available to somebody living in the city it doesn't matter which class uh, of society the person comes from and it is a term that is understood by everyone now i'm just giving you a little bit of an overview the word rasa and bhava they are also used in ayurveda okay ayurveda which is the the body of knowledge related to life and uh, related to overall well being of the person f- f- looking at the whole person uh, unfortunately gets referred to as alternative medicine although it was 5000 years old so rasa the word is used in ayurveda where again the the meaning is the essence of something so so much food you eat but the essence of something is what contributes to the health of your body so now what does all this have to do with me and vedanta because our pursuits okay our human pursuits have been mapped by the veda the veda very clearly veda is a body of knowledge it has come to us from the rishis the seers uh, thousands of years ago and preserved by a certain oral tradition it is not born out of somebody's imagination the whole body of knowledge that is the veda maps human needs so any person anywhere in the world definitely does certain things goes out to work or is managing one's own investments all that artha security pursuit of security or even preserving what you already have you are involved with artha pursuit but that's not enough so when we were, you know were looking to get a job somewhere it also mattered which company it was it also mattered which location it was it also mattered who are the team members over there and in terms of family it matters to us how our relationships are all that is pursuit of kama pleasure so human beings at whatever age and stage in life 
So from the five year old child who says, no, mommy, I don't like the taste of this. I want something different to the 80 year old who says, oh, this, uh, the, these pair of shoes that you have bought for me are so comfortable and nice to wear. So they have nice cushion and uh, I think I will be able to walk a little bit with this. All the way pursuit of pleasure in different, different pursuits is there. But that's not enough for us human beings. We want the pursuit of universal values and therefore dharma very, very important. But still as we are living life, we see that no matter how much I have, no matter how much people value me or they don't value me, I am not free of self-judgment. I am either looking down on myself or I am actually okay. The other people think I am not okay. Or I may say that I am okay, but they are not okay. I can't hang out with these people. My God, they are so stupid. So I can't find anybody to talk to. People are so boring. So I am okay. They are not okay. Or I am not okay. Something's wrong with me. You know, we find reasons. But look at them. They have done so much in life. And uh, they are able to manage their life so well. And they don't seem to have any problem, etc, etc. So they are not okay. I mean, I am not okay. They are okay. Or when I reach a stage of frustration and depression, I will say, I am not okay. Even you are not okay. This life is not worth living. Forget it. Okay. So, so we reach that stage also. The most healthy stage for us to reach, you know, the, this understanding for us to have is that I am okay as I am. Okay. And you are also okay. So then there is no question of superiority or inferiority. You are okay. I'm okay. And, and all is well with the world. We, even if we have some misunderstanding, no problem. We will try and sort it out. Okay. This understanding that I am okay and you are okay comes from us understanding our emotions, being able to live with our emotions, being able to harness our emotions and not being victimized by our emotions. Because a lot of us will say, I don't know, I don't know what happened to me. I just got so angry. And then that person had it from me. Or we warn people. We say, don't make me too angry. Because once I start talking, then you have had it. Until then I'm okay. But don't press my buttons. Okay. Now as uh, self-controlling beings, surely Anger is not an issue for me. I am much bigger than any emotion I have. But that may not be my understanding. That is what Vedanta will teach us. So Vedanta, this positional body of knowledge at the end of the Veda, talks about how one can be free from self-judgment. Not by positive thinking, but by recognizing that you are more than your body and mind. You are much more than all of that. In fact, you are the limitlessness. You are limitless. Okay. So there is a whole systematic process for the study of Vedanta, which we look at in our other classes. Right now, my focus is for us to understand Rasa and Bhava. So, the more comfortable we are with our emotions, the more we understand them, the more we will harness them for whatever we are doing in our life. 
Having said that, Bharat Muni talks about uh, eight primary bhava. Bhava is, is, is like an emotion, but there is an element of cognition present. So, bhava, emotion, cognition, okay, that's how we will translate it. And rasa is the pleasure you derive from your own bhava or from somebody else's bhava. So when you see some uh, WhatsApp forward, I, I, the, <laughs> this WhatsApp forward, so when cat is petting one dog, okay, so the WhatsApp is full of all these forwards. So cat is petting the dog, it's a moment of what you think is affection. And if you love cats, then though you are wow, so, so, or you love dogs, then you're really going to enjoy that. So cat is petting the dog. So then what happens? Cat has not pet you, okay, you're watching the video. But when you see that, when you see the expression of emotion between the cat and the dog, or what you think is happening, there is a rasa in you. There is that you begin to feel very fondly that there is some warmth, affection, love invoked in you. Especially if you like cats. Even if you don't like cats, when you see that, the emotion is invoked in you. Okay? The emotion didn't travel from the cat to you. Because all emotions, all bhavas exist in our heart, it just gets invoked at different points in time. And Bharat Muni, when he talks about eight primary emotions, he says that <clears throat> uh, these, are, these are psychological states that are there in everyone. All these eight emotions, they are there almost every time, but they may or may, they, they are invoked, they come about at certain times, they don't come about at other times. And so I have an exercise for you. Okay. So while I talk about the eight emotions, I would like <clears throat> you to complete the sentence. Okay, so I'm going to use incomplete sentences. For example, uh, we, we take the first uh, bhava that he talks about, which is love. Okay, so ratihi. So what I want you all to do is um, write the statement, I feel loved when dot dot dot. The dot 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 is for you to complete the sentence with whatever comes in your mind. So I want you to do two variations. I feel loved when and just complete it with whatever comes in your mind. And the second is, I feel loving, okay, you feel loving towards someone when dot dot dot. Okay, so I want us to do this uh, right now. Try and do what you can and then, uh, of course, after the session is over, you can take the whole week to try and complete it. Okay, so you got the first statement, right? I feel loving when dot dot dot. I feel loved when dot 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 so i want uh, any one of you to share what you what you've written or what just comes to mind it'll be easier if you type into the chat box anyone okay just random whatever comes to mind So we don't have volunteers here. 
is usually, you know, the, who is the one who is going to take the first step, la? <laughs> Okay, so we have someone. Okay, wonderful. So let's go with this. I feel loved when others understand me. Right? So now there is an emotion. I feel loved. And it's related to a certain thinking pattern that others understand me. Okay? Understand what I say, what I feel. And even if I don't say or I don't feel, maybe they understand that also. Someone else feels loved when people around her don't wear any masks. They are not pretending that, you know, they are something that they are actually not. And they meet in an authentic way. There are no defenses. There are no uh, trying to act very tough, trying to... Uh, put the other down, etc, etc. So, I want you to pay special attention to the thought pattern that you have related to what you feel. Because if others don't understand you, the corollary, okay, I'm still going with the first statement. If others don't understand me, I don't feel loved. So there is no love in my life. So in all of this, I have not even begun to understand where Ishvara is. Ishvara is a word we are referring to for God. So that, that which is the material cause, that which is the intelligent cause of this all that we see here, all names and forms. So it's a very interesting statement when I say that uh, if others don't understand me, then I feel loved. Or if someone says, I feel loved when I am with my family, when I'm away from my family, I don't feel love. So it's a condition that conditions my feeling. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a condition, it's a special set of situations that limits me from feeling a particular way. What is wrong with feeling loved all the time? Or is it possible to feel loved all the time? It is possible. I am telling you it is possible. Okay. The more you understand Ishwara, it will be possible and I will, we, we will talk about it later. And someone says that when I understand I am that love. Now how to understand I am love? It all sounds very nice, very spiritual, <laughs> but how do you understand that? Because the interesting uh, thing about love is that you experience no separation with the other. When you feel totally understood, you may be miles away, but you, but you feel that you are one with that person or you are one with a certain understanding that you can handle anything. Like someone told me this, that you know when this fellow fell in love, he, I felt like I was Batman, Superman and Spider-Man rolled into one. So with great confidence walking on the street and I feel I can do anything. Hey, what happened actually? One person, okay? One person. One out of seven billion people on the planet loves you and it creates a whole transformation for you. Look at this, you know, for all of us who have had the experience of being in love, okay, I'm talking about romantic love. You, you think, I mean, nothing drastic has happened. The traffic jams are still the same. There are still other problems. Your parents don't understand you. And then your bosses are creating problems for you. But just because that one individual thinks you are lovable, you are acceptable, your whole perspective changes. It may last, of course, for a very short while. But it does happen and that's very, very interesting. 
that an emotion can transform your perspective. Likewise, your perspective can also influence the emotion you experience. On this subject, because when we talk about love, we are talking about love between all relationships, not only romantic love. So mother and child, sister, brother, sibling love, you know, love between friends, love uh, for your pet, so love for the country, all of this, that's what we are, we are looking at the entire range. And in that context, I want to uh, share a very beautiful uh, story. This occurs in the Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is a, a, a body of uh, knowledge which um, is one of the 18 Puranas. Okay, And there are a lot of stories of, uh, of Narayana, of the many manifestations of the Lord and uh, the glory, the glory of Vishnu, the glory of Narayana, etc, etc. So there's one small story in that, very interesting story about a five-year-old child called Dhruva. So Dhruva is the son of a king called Uttamapada. So this is a king. The king has two wives. So the, uh, the first wife has a son called Dhruva. The second wife also has a son called Uttama. And it so happens that once in the garden, the kids are playing. And Dhruva, this five-year-old fellow, wants to sit on his father's lap. So he tries, you know, he tries to sit on his father's lap. And the father, uh, the father doesn't do much, but uh, the second wife who's hanging around, the second wife says, you have no right to sit on your father's lap because you're not my son. Okay, you're not my son and you have no right to sit on your father's lap. So he starts crying because, you know, he's not asking for much. He just wants, he just loves his father. He wants to sit on his lap. So she shouts at him. She drags him away. The, the second wife and uh, says that if you really want to sit on your father's lap, you must pray. Pray that you are born as my son. So of course she was being really nasty to him, although he had done nothing. Okay. And uh, the boy Dhruva is crying and, and sobbing away because he's so hurt, he's so upset. And then he goes to his mother, who is the first wife of this king. And it's crying, crying, he's just not talking. So the mother, she, after some time, she says, what happened? And then he explains to her, this is what uh, happened. And the first one is a very, very gentle kind of a person. So she doesn't want to criticize the second wife, you know. Uh, and so she says that um, uh, maybe what, she, what uh, your stepmother said, maybe it's true that you, you, you may need to pray. And uh, it's important that you pray. Uh, and don't feel sad. It's okay. You know, you will have an opportunity at some point in time. Don't feel sad that because you have been hurt very deeply, you, you will get an opportunity to sit on your father's lap and you will feel all the love that he has to give you. Uh, but I think you must pray. So Dhruva is willing to do anything because he has been deeply affected. So he says, okay, I, I, that's what I will do. 
and uh, and then he walks away he 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 walks away from home and he goes to a forest and there there is another celestial being called narada so this narada he he has a visa multiple entry visa across all the worlds so he comes and he 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 sees okay this this fellow is very very upset and, and he knows the reason but he asks him what happened so dhruva says you know i want to sit on my father's lap and uh, even that uh, i have been denied and i have been told by my mother i must pray and uh, so so please help me like help me do this uh, i i this is what i want so then uh, narada gives him a mantra and and he tells him okay i will uh, i will tell you a mantra and you have to uh, be with this mantra day and night you have to chant it the whole time and i'm sure that lord narayana will bless you and so he uh, he gives him the mantra and i will also give you the mantra so some of you may know it and then narada walks away he he also tells him that you know you you go to this particular river your river yamuna and you sit there and then you visualize bhagwan narayana so for the sake of us connecting with ishwara certain descriptions are given so like uh, you know narayana is sleeping on this first coiled mattress which is all you know a snake actually ananta and uh, very relaxed because the whole creation is going on and for him everything is effortless because all the laws have all come from bhagwan so narayan is another word for bhagwan and uh, he is just relaxed okay very very relaxed so visualize that and dhruva was told that you chant so dhruva starts Uh, and 5 months 5 <clears throat> months pass so little boy living in a forest and all he is doing is chanting okay the mantra and then after the, the mantra is om namo bhagavate vasudevaya okay om om generally every mantra begins with om i most mantras namo bhagavate my namaskara my salutations to you bhagavan and vasudevaya so that in which the everything lives vasati iti that in which everything lives vasudevaya in other words we are always ever sitting in the lap of bhagavan another word vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya dhruva chants this mantra the whole 5 months first month he is barely eating some roots and fruits then he is just surviving on water then he is surviving on air and so on and so forth and all the other devatas the deities they get very hassled because they are like my god who is doing this intense tapasya intense penance so there is something that's not quite right so they all run to narayana and they say somebody is really praying to you very very severely and you please do something about it because uh, what dhruva is praying for is uh, he starts out wanting to have this experience of being loved by his father by just a small action of sitting on his lap but as it proceeds his in its intense his his whole sadhana and his uh, devotion to narayana and he is enjoying the chanting the mantra over so many months so narayana says okay i think it's time i have to appear before him he appears dhruva's eyes are still closed because he's, he in his mind he is visualizing narayana so so he is reveling it 
So what does the Lord do? He removes that visual from his mind's eye. So then Dhruva is a bit shaken and then he opens his eyes and then he's, he can't believe that the way he had visualized Narayana, exactly the same. So Bhagwan is here in front of me and I have done all this. I prayed and prayed and prayed because uh, understand this. Every mantra is a prayer. It is a sound invocation. Okay? Pun intended. It's an invocation through sound. Through sound, a special sound, a sacred sound. So it's a puja actually. When you chant a mantra, it is a puja that you are doing through sound. You can do puja in many ways. You can worship the Lord in many ways. This is puja, this is worship of the Lord through sound. So Narayana comes and Dhruva opens his eyes and he can't speak. So Narayana says, tell me, he can't speak. He, he is absolutely stunned. And then very gently, Narayana touches his uh, cheek with a conch which you know <clears throat> symbolically represents uh, giving him the knowledge of the Vedas and um, and then after that Dhruva starts singing the glories of Narayana there are some eight verses like that you know called Dhruva Stuti and where he is talking about his discovery of Ishwara of Bhagwan that I see that all that is here has come from you and you are the sun and the clouds and this and that and a lot of beautiful praises are there for Narayana. This is what he has discovered. He, he says that. And then after he says that, he has understood a lot about Bhagwan, This little boy of five, Dhruva, then uh, after he finishes saying, the Narana says, okay, now you, uh, I will give you a special place. You felt, Dhruva, you felt that you somehow didn't have a place. You wanted to be on your father's lap and you didn't get that space which you deserve. So when you return home, of course, you will be able to do that. Not only that, what we consider as the pole star, the north star, that is actually Dhruva, okay? You may believe it, you may not believe it and that's fine. So what Narayana says is that you will be that star in the sky for, for a long, long time. That star which is unshakable, in fact the sun and the moon and all these other seven uh, other stars, what we call Sapta Rishi, they will also go around you. So this going around you, you know, uh, it's it's uh, what we call Pradakshina. Pradakshina meaning it's a, it's an act that we do, a symbolic act, especially when you go to a temple to 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 basically say that may I know you Ishwara uh, in all your glory. See because when you see, when you see the deity in the temple, you see the front of the deity, whatever decoration is there, you see the front. So it is just a part of Ishwara because Ishwara being symbolized in the deity. Then. You will see this in, in temples, whether in India or elsewhere, that the person who prays to the deity will then go around, you know, one round at least, what we call Pradakshina, will go all around symbolically saying that may I know all of you. Because I have only seen one direction, only one part of you, may I know all of you. So Narayana tells Dhruva that you will be after, you know, you have ruled for 30,000 years. Imagine. So you will not only be able to sit on your father's lap, you will be made the king 
and you will have a wonderful rule and of course i totally bless you you will be ruling for a long long time and when you want when you are ready then when you leave the body you will be that uh, not star and people will uh, go around you and uh, go going around you is symbolic again of respect and what you have done is absolutely amazing uh, the tapas your devotion to me and this is how i bless you so say narayana bhagwan leaves so dhruva is most uh, i mean anyway you know through his own mantra tapas uh these religious discipline he he has discovered a lot and with the final blessing and darshan blessing of darshan you know this he appeared narayana appeared before him so he is very very happy and uh, so he sets onward you know he he says okay okay now it's time for me to go back home and so he starts moving in that direction in the meanwhile uh, narada goes and meets the king and the king is very very upset and very sad he's like how could i be so stupid like i was so you know so caught up with my second wife that i could not tell her that what she said to dhruva was not correct you know i but i'm i was so obsessed with my second wife that i couldn't uh, tell her what she you know she should not have behaved that way and my poor little boy my first son god knows what kind of a, where he might be whether he's alive how could i allow him to just walk away like this and uh, i have done something terrible and all of that so he tells all this to narada so narada says no problem your son will return and uh, he will make a very very good king and uh, all is well So Dhruva returns, and of course he gets to sit on his father's lap. And you know the interesting thing about Dhruva is that his starting position was not feeling loved, okay? And that's why he, that's what he wanted the most. But through his discipline and through him being blessed by Narayana. he recognized that my sense of disconnection or isolation is really because i don't understand ishwara i have never prayed because i i the the truth is i am always resting in the lap of ishwara every moment so as the wind blows as the air that i breathe the all the processes of the human body even if you are sitting on a chair or a sofa or a very uncomfortable place or you are sitting on a yoga mat or you are sitting in the flight wherever you are sitting what are the laws and principles that uh, uphold you what are those laws and principles that uphold all your pursuits it is really all the way it is ishwara something to be understood as we go along and so what i would like us to do is uh now uh quickly uh, if you have a piece of pen and paper draw yourself in the center quick So this is not a drawing examination okay you just do a quick drawing you you do one okay yourself in the center then i want us to think about the nicest things you have heard about yourself so whatever beautiful loving things that people have told you at different points in time just write all of that around you okay so we'll get started today in the session and you will want to complete it at a later date because you you because this will take some time for us to really think about all the very wonderful loving nice things that 
different different people even sometimes strangers may have told us okay Okay, can anyone share one or two statements? Maybe you can type in the uh, chat box. <clears throat> okay, so somebody said that you are calm. Is that what? Yeah, okay. So any statement of appreciation of you, it may be a talent, it may be a skill, it may be something um, that, uh, you know, some very beautiful qualities about you, anything, okay? Okay, so we have a few statements here. Uh, come to us, here in our house, you are home. So you feel totally embraced, right? It's, it's a statement, the person has actually maybe not uh, really physically hugged you but just that statement that you are actually embraced by the words very beautiful okay or if somebody said okay you are caring you are soft you are gentle you are balanced you're good listener okay all these things great fantastic now they are saying all this because it's true okay not because they are trying to flatter you and Okay, someone else has also shared, you represent that love, you are present and you do, you meet everyone within their heart and where they actually are available. Very beautiful, very authentic, lovely. Okay, so now all these statements about you is really what... Uh, indicates to you that you are lovable. Okay, I may not feel like that sometimes, but that, that I am a manifestation of Ishwara makes me lovable. Okay, I repeat, that I am a manifestation of Ishwara makes me lovable, although I may be very irritating to be with. That's in terms of personality traits which we will look at later. Okay. So I may have many angularities in my personality. But that's okay. I mean we work on that. But for us to see that I am the love that I seek, I have to first start with seeing that I am lovable. Maybe only two people thought in this whole wide world and that too only at some point in time they thought I was lovable. Does it matter? We hold on to that and we see that we are lovable. Yes, some people also told us that but also that I am a manifestation of Ishwara, Bhagwan, and that is what makes me lovable. So now, you know, I want you all to complete this, this, this exercise after the session. At some point in time, in the next uh, day or so, fill the page with all the possible compliments that uh, you have received. So, of course, you have to think about it, okay? You have to spend some time thinking about it. Don't run away from this task and only think of, Oh, but this one said that to me and that was negative and that was a criticism. No, 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 no. Focus, okay? Focus only on what, on the good stuff that they said about you. And I want us to see that this is what 
for for some of us can act as our invisible armor you getting what i'm saying you know armor like you know when you go into battle so you wear something that protects you now we are not the we are not the warrior variety who are in battlefield or even into karate in the you know boxing ring or dojo or whatever but psychologically we get hurt very often and to to take care of psychological hurt first i have to allow my wounds to heal i may have some wounds okay i cannot run into battle with lot of wounds first i have to allow my wounds to heal or i can do it simultaneously and i also need to have some sort of protection whereby i am not affected by all the criticism that is heaped on me or alternatively even if the person is not doing anything i always feel criticized because i am not thinking clearly okay it could be either way so i want us to invoke all these wonderful compliments that we have received about us as people our talents our skills our abilities fill up the entire page and uh look at it visual i mean you know after you look at it in great detail i want us to start chanting that mantra so that's going to be your task for this entire week we will chant the same mantra that dhruva chanted uh which you know and and he was deeply blessed so certain things to remember <clears throat> i think most of us are familiar with chanting so there's not much to say uh you find a particular but still i will say a few things you find a particular time in the day uh preferably in the morning after definitely after you've had a bath but if your mornings are crazy then you know do it at another time during the day but definitely before you sleep and uh, you can use your fingers you, you use your fingers in a particular way or you can use a, a, a japa mala and you before you sit for the chant i want you to visualize this paper that you have done and that you people have loving caring things to say about you because you are lovable that i am lovable and i want to sit in the lap of narayana i want to sit in the lap of ishwara actually speaking i'm already sitting in ishwara's lap but i don't fully get it and so therefore we seek the grace of bhagwan to have this rasananda to have this experience of being loved very deeply and you will report to me next week when we meet and you will see a lot of things will change for you okay don't believe me you try and we will see what happens okay so i will uh, you know because of there quite a few i may not be able to hear all of you chant but what i would like to do is um, i i will just repeat it again so that uh, we are very clear about the pronunciation so it is om namo bhagavate now understand it's not bhagavate okay so when you take the upper part of uh, the, the the this first portion of your tongue and take it to the upper part of your teeth and try and make a sound so it will be bhagavate okay you te those a little bit of the tongue will come out and then you try and make a sound it will be bhagavate so om namo bhagavate vasudevaya that's the mantra okay 
how many times do we chant chant one mala only okay if you have more time you can chant more but please chant one mala so that's 108 times um 108 times you will chant so i i will what i will do is right now i want to i will initiate you maybe we can chant 11 times and then you continue and finish the chanting um, for today okay so two tasks for you complete your that for that that paper don't think no no but i know what everybody says about me no since you have signed up for the program you have to complete it and and you see yourself being lovable you see yourself um, wanting to be loved and be loving to others uh, because there is nobody who doesn't want that okay so because it feels very natural to us we want that and we we, we do that uh, we do that visualization that I am sitting in the lap of Ishwara and I seek the grace to experience love and to be loving because love is a lot of strength and I chant okay so we will chant together I will chant you can you know you can also chant uh, but I may not be able to hear you okay because you know the way the sound moves across speakers so we'll all chant together we start now Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Okay, so you can complete the rest and uh, I will see you in the next class. Okay. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadradi Pashyantu Ma Kaschituk Abhag Bhavet Asatoba Sadkamaya Tamasoba Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Amritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Hi Om So I'll take some questions if there are If there are no questions then we will meet uh, next week Okay The transcription <coughs> Okay uh, let me write it down for you. Mm. you. You transcription. You mean transliteration? I think, huh? In case uh, anyone is not uh, confident of their pronunciation, then what you can do is, uh, you you can you know we can do it right now. We can check, or you can. Uh, WhatsApp me, okay, uh, and I can send you a voice message and I can also hear you if you send me a voice message and I can correct where you're going wrong in case, okay. So that's the mantra. Possibly, I may not cover, uh, so I have a question, will I be covering the main the remaining seven emotions in the next few classes not necessarily this is the main emotion okay so love is the it's not it's more than an emotion actually but uh, we will be focusing more on this and then i will talk be talking about uh, a lot of other things as well 
I will touch on the, the, the others definitely. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Okay, wonderful. Okay, in case uh, something comes up for you while you're chanting, you know, you, you can just uh, w watch it and then let it be. But of course, I'm available in case you need to write. Um, do we, do you chant loud? It's better you chant softly. If you are used to chanting and you can move to mental chanting, that's great. If you are not able to do it, chant it softly. Yeah. If there's nobody in the room, you can also chant loudly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. It looks like there are no more questions. So I will see you next time. Uh, same, same time, uh, same time, India time, 4 p.m. Um, uh, next Sunday, which is the 10th, uh, tenth, tenth, right? Okay. So have a wonderful week, everyone. Oh.